a nice and tight open, please. But the operator said as soon as there was a line fixed, he'd put me through. No, not long. But I was very worried about you. The headlines here are full of it. It's a big thing to ring you, but it's worth it to know that you're all safe. The call is waiting in box two, sir. Oh, thanks. Excuse me. The whole of the post office is normally under varying degrees of pressure, and anything from flood to fancy can measurably increase this pressure on any of our sections, telephone, telegraph, radio or postal. For instance, when you send a telegram, you start a series of activities which are only made possible by a vast expenditure on delicate equipment, so perfected as to make the operation practically automatic. The transmission of inland and overseas messages is initially governed by recording variously combined perforations on a paper tape, the perforations allowing otherwise opposed pecker levers to come through and make contact. The message is in this way transmitted to Himatangi, where it's retransmitted overseas. Himatangi provides direct speech and telegraph contact with all overseas countries, at the same time supplementing the existing submarine cable service. Himatangi transmits, macro receives. High on a hill overlooking the Tasman, Makra is in constant touch with the outside world. Where Himatangi speaks, Makra listens, needing the same infinite care and attention to detail. Yes, one on circuit, Earl. Oh, we'll just check and see him. 27 in London. This is station ZLZ31 in Wellington calling. Hello, London. Hello, London. Would you assign my serial in nearly 1452? Hello, Mr. Gordon. Mr. Peters calling you from Wellington. Go ahead now, please. Hello, Alan. How are you? Yes, I can hear you fine. We haven't had any letter from you. It's all a question of knowing what to listen for. For instance, photographs can sound very odd indeed when being transmitted. Practically any facsimile can be radio transmitted, signature, fingerprint, document, as well as the more familiar hot news photograph in the morning paper. Hello, Wellington from Melbourne. Picture finished now. OK, thank you, Melbourne. Stand by for a report, please. That's all right. What's your story? Coming over the wire from London now. Harry Hill, look after it. The collecting, integrating and dispersal of news from all parts of the world makes such calls on the post office department as to justify direct press association facilities over a special radio network, which, with the help of the humble mail service, brings the world to the door of even the most isolated settler. Most people have their mail delivered once a day, but there are still many isolated communities for which mail day is a day to look forward to. Whether the mail comes by van, by plane or by steamer, it's sure of a warm reception. That's a better end. The mail must go through. Hope my parcel comes. Thank you. A bill. Oh. Would you like to hear this week, Jack? Come on, lady. Mail. Area farms, another window. Secret. Thank you. Looks like mine down there. Oh, gee. Other area farms. Tell me if we get too many of these. Or you can pass that over onto somebody else. Hey, where's mine? Well, Mr. Green, there's a telegram. Well, there are a few money on a telegram. I'll be over just after lunch. Thank you. Great Barrier Island is a fair distance from the mainland, but everyone's on the phone and all they have to do is to give the crank an extra long ring and a radio automatically cuts in and connects them to the Auckland Exchange. Hello, Auckland. It's Port Fitzroy here. May I have Wellington, please, 48698? And what delay is there on the Wellington line? In fact, with radio telephony, what it is today, no person is ever really isolated. He merely lives on a street that's rather longer than most. Thank you. 
shine there, please. Thank you. How's Joe, Mrs. Cooper? Very well indeed. He's at Cuvier and enjoying himself very much there. I sent him a parcel out by the boat this morning. So the old PV, so the old PV, uh, this is Zebra Mike Nan King, uh, Zebra Mike Nan King to ZLPV. How do you read, please, over? Zedem NK Endeavour, ZLPV, Kiwi Island answering, uh, reading it out and clear, Captain, over. Zedem LPV, this is uh, Roger Mike Nan King answering, receiving you loud and clear, Bob. Uh, we'll be there in two hours. The whole pattern of post office activities is one of interwoven facilities. Perhaps interlinked would be a better word to use, for there's constant link between telephone, telegraph, radio and cable. Service is in continuous operation over land, over seas and out onto the sea itself. Marine radio beacons operating from such lighthouses as Cuvia help to guard ships against danger, at the same time keeping in touch with shore installation and reporting weather conditions for the meteorological office, never breaking the link that binds this isolated rock to the mainland. Cuvia Island from Auckland Radio, good afternoon. Go ahead, please. Cuvia Lake to Auckland, good afternoon. And here's the weather. 1500, 0, Two, three, X-ray, double X-ray. How's that, please, Ever? Hello, Cuvia Island from Auckland Radio. Uh, your weather received, thanks. Is there anything I can do for you, Ever? Uh, Cuvia back, uh, yes. Uh, I'd like you to ring uh, Franklin's for me, please, if you would, and ask them to put a bag of potatoes on this week's boat for me, please, Ever. Cuvia from Auckland. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Uh, thanks very much. Cheerio. Uh, Roger, Auckland. Thanks a lot. Cheerio now. It's in the toll section that the post office department experiences the greatest pressure. To meet this ever-increasing demand, multi-channel cables, called coaxial cables, are being introduced. One of these cables is being laid between Auckland and Hamilton. Assisted by repeater stations erected at various intervals, coaxial cables are able to carry 960 conversations at one time and may eventually replace the pole and wire technique of more leisurely days. Newest of post office facilities to be made available to the public is the mobile radio telephone, which is at present being used by ambulances, consumer service organisations and taxis. Whether in remote area or crowded city, the accent is always on service, a service that affects the lives of all of us who want to keep in touch. <laughs> 